In this section, we're going to look at applications of derivatives. And here's one application. We have some relationships between position, velocity, and acceleration. So I'm going to go through some of the uh, definitions for you. So first, S of t, that's what we're calling position. Position means as time goes on, we see where the point actually is or how far it actually goes in a certain amount of time displacement. Maybe it'll go um, in the course of five seconds, maybe it'll move over like 10 meters, something like that. Second thing is if we take the derivative of position, we're going to get our velocity function. So the derivative of position is velocity. Why is that? Okay, if we had a graph of position versus time, we, if we look at the slope, we might get something like miles per hour or meters per second, something like that. So that's the slope of position is velocity. That means that slope is the same thing as derivative. Then we have this derivative of velocity is acceleration. So same thing, if we had a, a graph of the velocity and we found the slope of that, we would get the acceleration. So now that we've taken a look at these, let's look at a couple examples. So for our first example, we have a position function that we're given. We want to find the velocity and acceleration functions. As we just mentioned earlier, if you want to find the velocity, that's going to be the derivative of position. So to do that, we're going to show this. So s primed of t is the same thing as v of t. Okay, so if I take the derivative of this, that'll give us our velocity function. Where I do the derivative, using the power rule, 2 comes down, multiplies by the 4, we get 8t. For this one, there's a minus 1 in front of the t, so if you do that derivative, you get minus 1. So this is our velocity. Velocity function is 8t minus 1. Next, you want to find the acceleration. To do that, we're going to take the derivative of velocity. Derivative of velocity is acceleration, as we mentioned earlier. We're going to take the derivative of this function right here. When you do, it's going to get 8. So the acceleration function is going to be a constant. It's always going to be 8. Let's look at another example. This one, an object is thrown vertically upward, whose height is given by this function. So we're given a position function. They're asking us to find the velocity at 3 seconds. So to do that, we have to first find the velocity function, and then once we're done with that, we're going to put in uh, 3 seconds into that. So to do this one, we know that the derivative of position is our velocity. And when we do that, derivative of the velocity, we can use the power rule again. 2 comes down times negative 16, you get negative 32. Then you have t to the first power, subtract 1 from that. Derivative of 100 is 0. So this is your velocity function. They want you to find the velocity after 3 seconds. So it's asking us to do this. They want you to find v of 3. So we're just going to put 3 in here in place of t. You get negative 32 times 3, and you get negative 96. So let's talk about the units that you're going to have here. Okay, now think about your velocity is a slope. It's position versus time. Where our position is given in terms of feet, and time is given in terms of seconds. So if we do the slope on that, that would be the rise over run, so that would be feet over seconds. So that means that your unit would be feet per second, negative 96 feet per second. Now, it doesn't ask us for this, but let's find the acceleration function also. Now, if we want to find the acceleration, this is your derivative of velocity. It's going to be your a of t. Okay. To do that, we're going to take the derivative of velocity. The derivative of this one, negative 32, t, is just going to be negative 32. So why do we get a constant? Okay, it's because we're throwing this up and we're throwing it on the earth, we assume. And so the acceleration due to gravity on the earth is always constant. And that's actually what it is in terms of feet. Now, what will the, will the units be on this? This is actually feet per second squared. Because if you do the slope of this one here, then you have feet per second over seconds. And so that's going to give you the second squared uh, down below. If you're in terms of meters, and you'd be using negative 9.81 meters per second squared, 
And so again, it's always going to be a constant. So that's why for problems when you're throwing things up in the air, usually you always will get a, a constant acceleration, assuming that you're going to be on the Earth.